Hi class, welcome to exercise 10e, expanding and simplifying polynomials. In your lesson today, your examples and pre-learning will be example 10, expanding polynomials. And your pre-learning for this example will be questions 1, 2 and 3 in the new book and 4 and 5 in the old book. And then we'll do example 11, which is expanding p of x times q of x. And your pre-learning for this example will be questions 4 in the new book and questions 6 in the old book. All right, let's get straight into the introduction today. I think adding and subtracting polynomials is very easy if you know how to collect like terms. But in our next block, we'll be dividing polynomials and dividing is going to be very challenging. So let's have a warm up lesson, multiplying polynomials. So as part of our quadratics unit, we covered multiplying binomials like x plus two times x plus three and the most common way of doing that was using the FOIL method, right? So the first two are x times x, and the outside two is x times three, the inside two is two times x, and the last two are two times three. And then once we collect like terms, we're left with x squared plus five x plus six. And we could think of a number equivalent like 10 plus three times 20 plus one, and using FOIL again, we've got 10 times 20 plus 10 times 1 plus 3 times 20 plus 3 times 1. And I'm not sure if we'd say we're collecting like terms, but we're adding the numbers together. And this all adds together to be 273. And the reason why I use numbers, because you know that 10 plus 3 is 13 and 20 plus 1 is 21. So what we're really saying is, 13 times 21 equals 273. Now, if I was to multiply two quadratics together, such as x squared minus x plus three times two x squared plus x minus one, well, it's probably gonna be a little bit more complicated. So I'm gonna do the number example this time, and we're gonna look at 214 times 327. And so that means that we've got 200 plus 10 plus four, times 300 plus 20 plus 7. Now what we really did with the FOIL is we took the first element, which is 200 in this case, and then we multiplied that by the whole bracket on the right, and then we took 10 and multiplied that whole bracket on the right. Okay, and we took into account that we're adding the 200 and the 10, but we're also adding a 4, so we need to multiply that by the whole bracket as well. And then if we multiply across the brackets here, 200 times 300 is 60,000, and 200 times 20 is 4,000, and 200 times 7 is 1,400. And multiplying that bracket by 10, we get 3,270, and multiplying by 4, we get 1,280 and 28. And we've got a 60 and a 4 and a 3,000, so that's 67,000. I've got a 12, 14, and 200. That makes 2,800 and 80 plus 70 is 150 and then there's that 28. So we get 69,800 plus 178 which is 69978. And maybe we should check Phew. I think you're all pretty confident doing it with numbers so let's go back and have a go at the algebra we started with. So in much the same way, I'm gonna break up the bracket on the left and multiply it by the bracket on the right. So we've got an x squared, and that's a minus x, and a plus three. All right, so that's exactly what these brackets are saying. If we look at that bracket on the left there, we're saying each part of that multiplying the bracket on the right. And we show that by breaking it up. All right, let's evaluate each one. So we've got two, two times x to the four and x cubed minus x squared. So minus two times x cubed uh, minus, minus, makes minus x squared and plus x. And then we've got the three there, so we get six x squared plus three x minus three. Then we want to collect some like terms here. So there's only one x to the power of four and I can see two x's to the power of three. Minus two plus one gives me minus x to the three, and we've got three x squareds, 
So plus six minus one minus one is plus four x squared. And we've got three plus one x, so that's four x. No singing Queensland beer commercials, please. And then we're finished with minus three. So I actually don't think it's that challenging at all. And probably the biggest challenge to come out of it is, could you come up with a new word to replace foil? Now in our last lesson we spoke about degrees of polynomials. So I just want you to note here that if um, I have a polynomial with degree n and another polynomial with degree m, then when I multiply those polynomials together, I'm going to have another polynomial that has degree n plus m. Now I think I should let you think about that, but if you don't understand, ask me why. Um, it really is important that you know. Also one other note. Um, if f of x is equal to our two polynomials multiplied together, then if I was to sub in any real number a into f of x, then that f of a should equal the same a subbed into the first polynomial times the same a subbed into the second polynomial. So if we just use those two quadratic polynomials we had before, i.e. p of x was equal to x squared minus x plus 3 and q of x is equal to 2x squared plus x minus 1 which from above we saw this f of x equal to px times qx is equal to 2 times x to the 4 minus x to the 3 plus 4x squared plus 4x minus 3. So for a I'm going to choose minus 2 so I'm going to sub minus 2 into p which means we've got minus 2 squared minus minus 2 plus 3 which is just 4 plus 2 plus 3 which equals 9 and q of minus 2 is 2 times minus 2 squared plus minus 2 minus 1 which is 8 minus 2 minus 1 which is 8 minus 3 which is 5 so therefore p of minus 2 times q of minus 2 equals 9 times 5 which is 45. All right and we can see our f of x there so let's sub minus 2 into that which will give us 2 times minus 2 to the 4 minus minus 2 cubed plus 4 times minus 2 squared plus 4 times minus 2 minus 3 and evaluating each of those terms we get 32 plus 8 plus 16 minus 8 and minus 3 which is equal to 45. If that's moving a little quickly for you pause the video and look at the screen and double check my arithmetic there. Now we've come to the end of the introduction and I'm going to leave it up to you if you need to practice to expand and collect like terms. After the amount of times we've done them this year many of you won't need to. However if you do Pause the video now and do the building understanding questions in the new book, which translates to questions 1, 2 and 3 in the old book. And then you can come back and we'll do the next section. At this stage of doing pre-methods, I'm pretty confident that you're going to be confident in using the distributive law. For example, a plus b times c plus d is equal to a times the bracket on the right plus b times the bracket on the right. And you could rush and doll this as far as you want. So a plus b plus c is the same as a plus b plus c, right? And if I multiply that by e plus f, then I can multiply e plus f by the term on the left, which is a, and the term on the right, which is b plus c. And while we've got the a times e plus f here, we can now expand the b plus c and get b times e plus f plus c times e plus f. And as I said, we could go on and on and on with this. Um, I'm editing this video right now and I can't believe what I just did. Well, what I did when I recorded it. So that a plus b there doesn't make sense, does it? a plus b does not equal a times c plus d plus b times c plus d. That should be a plus b times c plus d. 
in that top row there. Hopefully that makes a little bit clearer. We also need to remember that x times n times x times m is equal to x to the n plus m and how to collect like terms. All right, that's really all there is. So let's have a go at that in example 10, where we're gonna expand and simplify the following. In part A, we've got x cubed times x minus 4x squared. And honestly, I feel like this is a bit of a letdown. We've got one term times a binomial. But anyhow, let's keep going. Um, x cubed times x is x to the four, and x cubed times minus 4x squared is minus four times x to the five. All right, part B is a little bit better. We've got x squared plus one times x cubed minus x plus one. So splitting up the first bracket, we get x squared times the x cubed minus x plus one and plus one times the x cubed minus x plus one. And you and I know that you don't really need to write one times. But anyhow, let's keep going with the expansion. So we've got an x squared times x cubed, which is x to the five, uh, minus x cubed plus x squared. And we just need to rewrite that bracket because it's multiplied by one. So when we collect like terms, the x cubes cancel out. And we've got an x to the five plus x squared, a minus x plus one. And that's all. So you should have a lot of confidence heading in to do your pre-learning for that. So pause the video and do questions one, two, and three in the new book, or questions four and five in the old book. And then we'll see you in the next section. Px times Qx is pretty much the same as what we saw in the last section. It's just that the polynomials are defined as a polynomial, right? And Qx squared is also the same. It's just that we multiply the same polynomial twice. But there is a little shortcut. You don't have to use this, but you may want to. Now, it doesn't matter if we're going to have x's raised to powers. In the end, if I've got three terms in there, and I've not put an x there because I'm not using x's, um, but q squared is going to equal a plus b plus c times a plus b plus c. So we're going to get a times the whole bracket, so that'll be a squared, plus AB plus AC, and then B times it will give us AB plus B squared plus BC, and C times it will give us AC plus BC plus C squared. And you can see the diagonal going from top left to right there gives us each term squared. And then we've got two ABs, two ACs, and two BCs. So what you end up with is each term squared and then two times any possible combination of two different variables being multiplied together. But that is a bit complicated, I know. So really, there should be a license for that. All right, let's look at example 11, where we've got two polynomials, px equals x squared plus x minus one, and qx equals x cubed plus two x plus three. We can see that px has a degree of 2 and qx has a degree of 3. And remember that I said that if I multiply these two polynomials together, it should have a degree of 2 plus 3 here, right? And in this example, we're going to expand and simplify when we do some multiplications. All right, part A, we're going to do px times qx. So we've got x squared plus x minus 1 times x cubed plus 2x plus 3. Okay, that's just the definition of P and Q. So we've got the X squared out of P times all of Q, and we've got the plus X out of P times all of Q, and minus one, which is just the same as saying minus all of Q. So therefore we've got X to the five plus two times X cubed plus three X squared. And if I multiply the X across now, we've got x to the 4 plus 2x squared plus 3x. All right, get your powers right, which is obviously just adding them together. And then it's just minus the brackets there. Let's be careful not to confuse ourselves here and cross out each term as we do it. So I've got an x to the 5 here, and that's it. So that's x to the 5. And I've got no powers of 4, but I've got 2 
plus one minus one makes two times oh i've made a mistake let me uh fix this up that should be x to the four here all right so let me cross out the crosses okay let's start again the x to the five is correct i got one x to the four two minus one makes plus one x to the three three plus two makes five times x squared and three minus two makes one x and minus three so yeah we really got to be really careful there you can see the mistakes i was making all right let's have a go at part b where we have to square the polynomial q so we can write out that so we've got the x cubed times all of q and plus 2x times all of q and plus 3 times all of q and then x cubed times x cubed is 6x cubed plus 2 times x to the 5 plus 3 times x cubed oh my goodness i have to stop hang on let me delete that why on earth did i write 2x squared in there all right let's start again so x cubed is x to the 6 and x to the 4 plus 3x3 three three. then we've got 2x to the 4 plus 4x to the 2 plus 6x and then we have 3x cubed and 6x plus 9 all right, and for our like terms, we've got a six, one, two, so that's four times x to the four. We've got two terms of cubes here, so that's uh, six times x cubed, but I might cross those out now. We've only got the one uh, x squared term there, and 12x plus nine. Let me move this one out of the way and block it off. So now I'm gonna write that a bit more neatly because I'm the sort of student who likes my teacher to be able to read my test easily. Just saying. All right, let's have a look at that shortcut before we go. So if Q of X squared was equal to X cubed plus two X plus three squared, remember how I said we'd square each term and then say two times each term multiplying each other? Let's see if that works. So let me just write out all these terms squared and then two times each term multiplied by each other. So x cubed times 2x is 2x to the 4. x cubed times 3 is plus 3x cubed. And then we've got to do 2x times 3 is 6x. So our terms here are x to the 6 plus 4 times x squared plus 9. And then 4 times x to the 4 plus 6 times x cubed plus 12x and have a look at that so it does work all right you better earn that license uh one more note here ignoring my shortcut method there when you're writing things out in long form it's much easier to collect the terms if you keep a good habit of ordering pairs of x starting with the biggest power on the left and counting down all right pause that video now and do Question four, if you've got the new book. Question six, if you've got the old book. And then when you come back, we'll be able to summarize this lesson. So as you saw, today's class has a lot of algebra. So it's really up to you to work on techniques that help you minimize the mistakes you make. But one bit of advice I did give you was to clearly order your terms. So while I don't expect today's class to be too challenging other than algebra, uh, we're going to get into a really challenging topic in our next class, which is dividing polynomials. And as you know, you always need to be good at multiplication if you want to do division. All right, so for this class, a successful student will be able to apply the rules of expanding brackets to multiplying polynomials. And understand that multiplying polynomials results in a polynomial of a higher degree. All right, well done. We'll see you in that next class, either video, or in the classroom. Bye.